In the summer of 1999, Vladimir Vasilyev brought the first group of his students and friends to Russia. These courageous Canadians, Americans, and Europeans came to Moscow to meet and train with the most remarkable man, Mikhail Repko, the teacher of Vladimir Vasilyev and a true master of fighting. Mikhail met us at the airport and took us directly to his gym for the first of his unforgettable classes. Mikhail is now instructing his students to work individually with each one of us to help and to get to know everyone in the process to avoid injuries and have a good time. This training class that Mikhail took us to is set up for his friends and some of his colleagues. Training for the special units is held at a different facility in a completely different setting. The foreign group that went to Russia in the following summer of the year 2000 had an opportunity to visit these pets facilities and go through the obstacle course. Even in this mostly civilian class, we were amazed to see how well Mikhail's students move and how effective their work and explanations were. We asked Mikhail to show us some basic movements, and he's starting with what he calls a basic demonstration with one of his students. Alex is the first brave volunteer from our group who wants to feel the moves on his body. Every person who ever watched Mikhail on video or live had doubts on how these moves would work on himself, especially the psychic energy component of his work. We all observed how our friend Alex, who has extensive martial arts background and knows how to fight, was flying around and falling, getting up, falling down, and laughing. People were even more intrigued then. Next, Randy wanted to experience this. Mikhail immediately pointed out Randy's tension at the hips. And now Mikhail's work was directed towards relaxing the hips and other tense and restricted areas. Randy is one of the most powerful men in Canada. Without any anabolic drugs, he was bench pressing 550 pounds. He weighs well over 200 pounds. This strong back manipulation up in the air was really amazing. So quick and effortless, just part of the regular work for Mikhail. Tension is the main cause of injuries. By pushing on the tense areas of the body in different positions, Mikhail was loosening up the restrictions and releasing the tension. Mikhail was explaining that he was working very carefully only according to what the student is ready to handle. Randy is a very thorough man and does not take things for granted. It was especially convincing to see him go through this work. We're with you, Randy. <laughs> Training sessions with Mikhail contain three components. Demonstrations, practice, and discussions. There are several fairly long demonstrations in classes. The goal is to let a student choose the moves that he likes, the moves that match his own nature. Mikhail does not impose a fixed technique or a movement pattern. You pick out what you can 
and then it becomes your own natural movement. Then you practice it, but not in order to memorize, but to understand it further. In the real confrontations, these will be the moves that you will apply, your own invincible weapon that no one can take away from you. When the physical practice begins, Mikhail works individually with each student. He makes the student change and benefit physically by relaxing him and going through the new moves. His personal contact makes the student experience the new, more powerful states of mind and energy. <laughs> He was holding back to keep from hurting me. This guy would have severely hurt me if I'd have been any more uh, aggressive than I was. Thanks very much. The next part of training session was working individually with Michael's students. Sergey is one of the top students and a colleague of Mikhail a famous operative of many special military operations, responsible for several highest risk successful missions. He is now working with our tall and fit friend David from Florida. Here is a good example of nonverbal communication where movements and facial expressions relay the messages. With a series of manipulations, Sergei is working towards the same goal as Mikhail, trying to relax the partner. He's stretching the muscles, shaking up, twisting, and applying pressure to let David feel where the freedom of movement is lacking and how to achieve it. He is sharing his own image of being soft and relaxed and gradually making David feel that way too. From the first moments of training, when we saw the people going down on the floor, we were wondering if mats are ever used in the Russian system. It is more recommended to work on the bare ground. This, on one hand, is the way the real confrontations take place. And on the other hand, falling on the floor really makes you relax. You quickly learn how to keep your body fluid and smooth. Moreover, hitting the floor in a way is like taking a punch on the body. When you learn to fall easily on a hard surface, you're also able to adapt to strikes and to reduce your fear of strikes. Here's our Simon from Colorado receiving his share of floor contact. Mikhail has a fairly high rank in this pet's unit. He is currently active so we have only a general description of his work. Mikhail is a tactical commander of a Spets division 
involved in counter-terrorist operations and armed criminal neutralization, a commander of hostage rescue teams, and an author of a textbook on tactics of special operations. The Russian system for Mikhail was the way of life. He was personally trained since childhood by one of the remaining Stalin's personal bodyguards. Mikhail was sent on spets assignments at the age of 15. Ever since, he has been continuously involved with the highest risk military and civil missions. He has also been training the Spetsnaz Rapid Reaction Force and the top government Spets divisions. Just recently, Mikhail has returned from war. As many other professionals in his line of work, he does not like to talk about it or about himself. His incredible skill in the martial art and in every other aspect of life speaks for itself. Here is John's turn to experience the hands-on training. Mikhail is explaining that there is tension in John's hips. John says that this is the result of over 200 parachute jumps during his airborne service in the U.S. Army. Mikhail continues that tension makes the legs less mobile, while relaxing the hips and keeping the legs slightly bent minimize the chances of breaking them. Mikhail's demonstration of how easy it is to throw a person off balance. You just have to know where to apply pressure. You should work softly with the partner. Do not use force, just make him understand. explanation here is as soon as one freezes a position he loses the movement once the continuity is lost the person becomes vulnerable I'm a competitive wrestler a wrestling coach for almost 30 years and I'm used to working body dynamics I'm used to people's motion I had to work against it and with this this guy isn't using any force at all it, it, it's as though he anticipates every move that you have to do and attacks your structural support for it before you have a chance to really utilize it. It eliminates anything you can do. The best thing you can do is to lose, keep your hips, maintain a little body position, and in a few seconds he's got you anyway. There's just nothing you can do. You now see a short demonstration of work using energy with one of Mikhail's students. We will try to have Mikhail explain this in the future films. The question asked here is why does the student scream during this work? Mikhail's answer is, this is a fairly advanced student and he realizes the danger behind the movements very quickly. And the way his body expresses the fear is by screaming.
you will now see a literally breathtaking lesson on punches and how to take them onto the body. Every man in our group gladly volunteered to go through this tough experience. Not just to feel the strikes and the way to handle them, but also to feel how Mikhail removes the pain and restores balance at the end of each session of strikes. The training here is to deal with the strike by exhaling and flexing the front and back muscles of the body. This way, you do not let the strike penetrate and do damage, and it teaches you to overcome the fear of contact. Now see a demonstration of uh, short punches. <laughs> These strikes magically made Jerome speak Russian. One of the starting exercises for psychic energy is called heavy hands. The weight of the hands here is not physical. The energy that fills the hands and then the partner makes him go down. of keeping the spine straight. He constantly teaches the body to relax and yet maintain the alignment. Even a small deviation from the straight line puts you off balance and enables the opponent to control you. No matter whether you're standing, falling or in any other position, the goal is to keep the form of a straight spine. Shifting my center of gravity is never where I wanted to be. 
Ты хоть что знаешь, что это? Постоянно ты его передвигаешь, ты не можешь Why? I had to. No, it seems that I'm. No, no, it seems there is camera guy. It's it seems that I'm pretending, you know, like I'm going up, up. It's not the case at all, you know. And that's it. And what is it? We should know very good the body structure. Yes, to manipulate. Надо структуру тела и хорошо знать. Да. И чувствовать напряжение, понимаешь? You gotta feel where this tension is. Oh come on, Alex, come on. Don't give up so quickly. I tried. Look at this. Okay, see if you can identify what's going on. Да. А потом ты спросишь его, как бы... Что он чувствует? See how much pressure a person can take. Позвоночник ров. If the back is straight. Да? А если не ров? And if it's crooked. So if the back is straight and you're getting pressure on it, then he can just stand. But once it's off the alignment, then it's really easy. Jerome lives and works in Paris, France. He has studied and taught martial arts for years, and now he's experiencing a new world in the hands of the master. <laughs> He feels where you're tense, and that's where you get. Yeah, I'm giving him support. So as soon as he makes contact, you give him support, and then he uses that. He takes away. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> he knows the human body so well. He's playing on the structure. And it's so easy to him. He's seeing tense areas and he's playing with the structure and the balance. What's his point? Is it clear? Ну, что когда он ровный, да, позвоночник, вот я на него давил, он держит, чуть-чуть голову, и все. So when the spine is straight, no matter how much he pushed, the trunk will keep the balance. As soon as the spine is twisted, he loses it. Для ног. Сейчас для позвоночника и для ног. 
Okay, this uh, exercise uh, for spine and for legs too. It's exactly this exercise. Remember you asked some exercise? Yes. Mm -hmm. So pushing down on the body. Pushing down, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you, you, you can see how the back moves uh, completely separately from the uh, hips or <coughs> lower back. Yeah. Oh, my legs <laughs> Here is another demonstration of work against kicks and strikes. Mikhail's goal again is to relax the partner by contacting the tense areas in his body. We are now 71 kilometers north of Moscow in the Troitsa Sergeyeva Lavra. La Working with Michael, I, uh, him moving me around, I, I feel that my body was tight and uh, he's, uh, he's, he's telling me how I should move to, to make it softer, so it's, it's good. So I think um, uh, I'll just have to keep, try and keep the mobility going. Very impressed with his knowledge of, of someone else's body. Uh, I think he's a very really skilled at reading. Um, reading a person's uh, um, body movements and, and internal structure. David wanted to see some knife defense. The particular feature about Mikhail's training method is to teach by showing the whole picture. 
He breaks movements down into components only when he works with someone individually. This way he can point out what that particular person needs and answer his specific questions. We also had some Russian doctors and healers treat and revive any of us that wanted to try it. We are now in Denver, Colorado at an amazing seminar. It begins with the words of welcome from the host and organizer, Mr. John Gitter. People from 12 different states and five different countries have come here, beginners and skilled practitioners, 
martial arts instructors, police officers, and other action professionals. This is the inaugural event in the World Federation of Russian Martial Arts. All three of the founding directors of the Federation, three great Russian masters, are here to share their knowledge and friendship. Mikhail Eripko, arriving from Moscow, Russia. Vladimir Vasilyev, arriving from Toronto, Canada. And Oleg Taktarov, from Los Angeles, California. So first of all, the way the system works, it's um, all the reflexes uh, of people are involved. Okay, and uh, Michael will demonstrate that. Um, so all your natural reactions uh, are being used. Uh -huh. Okay, there is... Uh, okay. There is one reflex we have from childhood is the gripping reflex, the grabbing. Uh, uh -huh. So we're going to use that when a person is coming at you. Um, OK. Your goal, uh, if he's trying to grab you, let him have your arm. And right away, he is in a very uncomfortable position. And then you can work with him. Go, go on. Uh -huh. So you're using his uh, grabbing reflex and to your advantage. There is nothing complicated or magic about this. And it, it, in the beginning, it looks uh, unclear. And you try it uh, with a partner. Mm -hmm. So here's the grabbing reflex. Okay. Here's the next reflex, uh, tensing up as well. So your opponent uh, gets... Uh -huh. He resists and he tenses up and you're using that too. <laughs> you gotta use it in the right way. Try that but don't rush. Huh? Sure. Yeah, demonstrate again. He's tense and <laughs> That's good. <laughs> okay, try. Okay, try it. Look for weak parts of the body. He was just explaining earlier. Um, yeah, don't try to overpower, right? And um, like if the top part of the body is tense, that means the bottom is vulnerable. So go there. Yeah. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Try to use less power, don't try to overpower the opponent, right? Um, it's more movement, use the movement. So as little force as possible, yeah. <laughs> That's good. The 
in principle is correct, but mm -hmm. using way too much force. Okay. То есть вы очень устаете тогда. You, you get tired out a lot. You both get tired because you're using so much force, right? Пускай okay. возьму сюда. Okay, grab. И вот ты не напрягайся. Don't be tense. А потихонечку руку. Just calmly bring your arm over. И второй, допустим, help with this one. Или туда, или вот так. Show us the same thing. То же самое хотят посмотреть. Grab. Следующие принципы – это вот. Okay, the next uh, principle we're going to use, the, the instinctive reaction is uh, fear, um, startle reflex. Startle reflex, yeah. That's it. Объясни, что а что ты сделал так? Ну как? Видели еще все? Пускай пробует, а мы пока. You saw everything, so just go ahead and try it. And then Michael will come around. Uh, it felt like somebody kept shutting on and off the lights, and there was Michael every time it came on. And I didn't have any control. And the last thing was really impressive because every time I kind of blinked, his face was right in mine, and all I could do was move backwards till I fell on my back. So uh, it was very impressive. <laughs> Thank you. When when a person is loading up. To uh -huh. throw a punch, uh -huh. you know, is there just practice to, to coordinate to get to that point? So you're uh, you're uh, stopping stop. him from delivering the strike, to. yeah. Okay, but how do you detect that? If I'm standing like I'm going to punch him uh, in the face. Uh, Ну, сделает, пускай на всякий случай. Все равно же видно, как бы, you could по tell. человеку, да, что он будет yeah. делать. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. You could tell right away. <laughs> he, has, he has no fear. He has no fear, though. No. So he has the только страх, чтобы кого-то не повредить, не покалечить. He only has the fear not to injure someone. He is afraid oh, to injure. Good point. Yeah. So in the absence of fear, then he can move freely. Right? То когда страха нет, то ты свободно движешься, да? Is, is there a correlation between the direction of the hand move this way and to where the punch is supposed to be? In other words, he goes this way and moves here because the punch goes that way. You understand? So it doesn't have to be related with the strikes. It's just that move. It's, okay. it's kind of distracting move. It's distracting when the person's going to move. Допустим, как бы сказать что нужно человеку, понимаешь? Вот, э, допустим, где большое скопление людей, да, mm -hmm. и на тебя толпа идет, да? Ты как будешь? So if, okay, it depends what you need. If there's a crowd of people, you have to get through. Okay. Uh, Ты же не будешь их там бить, всех, You're not gonna hit them, so you would distract them that way. Yeah. Просто убрал. Just 
just move them away. And... Part the Red Sea, right? <laughs> <laughs> to control, points to control. You know all these points, right? Uh -huh. You can work really well. You can control, right? That's right. You got control, right? Yeah. You got control this side, but you don't as a professional therapist, I've, okay. I've noticed that the way Misha uses the pressure points are the very healing points. They're used in particular combination. However, the way he's using them are in a cycle where he can actually drain energy from one, put too much energy in the other, and whenever he's using them according to different areas of the body and the further away I notice that my body begins to get weaker and I'll go down if, if that's what his design is or backwards and he can raise raise you up according to the direction of his energy the way he's pushing it. and I can feel myself that the energy remains in the body for a little while. I can feel it in particular organs and uh, there's little electrical shocks as he manipulates each of those points. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you look good. Did she really ask for punches or are you just... Oh, you... <laughs> Did the strike leave your body now? Yeah, exhale in a more quick way, like more forceful exhale. <laughs> Nothing that you do that Michael doesn't anticipate. Um, the part about with the striking and the breathing, exhaling faster, it uh, definitely makes a difference when uh, you exhale fast like you suggest rather than just breathing normal and thinking about it so much. The punch, the effects of the punch do leave you much quicker that way. Um, and working with Michael on the exercise, it's, you can't describe it until you're there. Um, it makes you know how much further you have to go uh, before you can even think about being any good at this. Um, but just feeling it is, you know, that, that two or three minutes is, is worth hours of, of training. So I very much appreciate that. Thank you. So exhale in a forceful kind of a way, quick, forceful. And don't bend your back, keep it straight. Uh -huh. The sharper is the strike, the sharper is the exhale. Keep the back straight. 
and don't take the stomach away. Just tight. А что это в конце делаешь? Может, ты объяснишь вот это? Ну, я просто убираю удар, который остается там у него. Я просто okay. You know, like at the end when the, the, the Michael has delivered enough strikes, he, he removes the, the extra, uh, как энергию, что ли, силу, боли. Ну, как хочешь, назови. Yeah. The, the extra force that's still left in the body, he removes it, and the person feels better. Right? Okay. А как ты это делаешь? Ну, вы же видите. Я... You saw it. <laughs> okay. And there's also a general rule that you don't bend the arm, keep it straight. Um, like in the wrist, it's, it's straight. So just raise the arm and lower it down. Mikhail was surprised okay, himself to see so many Americans wanting to experience the strikes. Throughout the seminar, people were literally lining up to have their turn of Mikhail's punches. It is hard to believe, but beyond pain, these strikes charge with positive energy, add power and life to the body. In this knife demonstration, you see again how no attacks or patterns are ever pre-arranged. The most unique quality of Mikhail's work is his understanding of movement. He just knows how the opponent is going to attack him, and he moves together with him, practically anticipating his every move. <laughs> he shows that starting position is not important and that there is no dependency on the knife at all. It is common for people to get stuck on watching and following the attacker's knife and this inhibits the movement. Mikhail explained that having a knife is the obvious advantage over the bare hand and any limitation in your movement makes you that much more vulnerable okay so you would like you to work in pairs just feel the knife uh, yeah feel the knife on your body so one person stabbing and the other one moving away from the line of attack okay what did you feel well I've uh, worked with uh, different cultural knife fighting systems since 1977 and uh, some, of the, some of the techniques are, are very similar to the Russian style, but they put it together with a kind of energy flow that's more flexible than, than anything I've ever felt. And also there are many variations of you know, body uh, dynamics and movements, which, uh, again, I've never encountered. So it's, uh, it's very interesting, um, very fascinating, and uh, it's very high level. And that's from someone who's worked with Filipino instructors, Chinese instructors, Indonesian instructors. <laughs> Every seminar participant who expressed a desire to work with Mikhail individually had a turn at that. People could choose any method of attacking, use any style of martial art, select any weapon or position. Only a portion of these sparring sessions made it into this film. Завтра воскресенье, 
The method of teaching of Mikhail Rybko is very different from most of the conventional schools. His main goal is to teach people to see. When a class is watching, there are few explanations or breaking the techniques down into components. And the amazing fact is that people do learn how to move just from observing. The demonstrations are always exciting and captivating. And later, when Mikhail works with people individually, he takes it to the next level and helps the students to make the moves that they picked out permanently their own. tossed around, I have no control, it's like I threw an attack and I feel like the more, I, if I amped it, he would just toss me even harder and so I just wanted to take it nice and slow, but it was an incredible experience, I was very impressed. Ordinary happened both during our training in Russia and at the Denver seminar weekend. The word got out that Mikhail can give a precise and inspiring advice on any life situation. And in between training, people were lining up to ask Mikhail opinion on many personal dilemmas. Some came with lists of questions. The surprising thing was that Mikhail knew the exact answer to the question before the situation was even described to him, or 
he saw the real question behind the one asked, and he even answered the questions before the person had a chance to read them off the list. We asked Mikhail, how can he possibly do that? Simple, he said, just be calm and do not expect anything from others, and then you will be able to see things as they are. <laughs> it was interesting working with Michael. I watched several tapes of him. And he just knows where your body wants to go and he helps you along in that direction. It's a lot of fun. I enjoyed it a lot. a brief demonstration of working with a sword. <laughs> We now see Mikhail demonstrating how to step and move around the partner and the proper footwork. Many people were amazed to see such a heavy set man moving with such lightness and agility. <laughs> we have all heard that doing the right things makes you feel happy. Mikhail makes us see how directly it applies to training. When you move in the right way, it brings happiness into your body, a sense of freedom and completeness. Anyone who ever tried to spar with Mikhail felt absolutely helpless, but never upset or hurt. <laughs> With all his outstanding skill and experience, Mikhail never calls himself a master or puts himself above anyone. He never tries to make an impression on his partner or on the audience. It doesn't matter to him who is better. He's only sharing and enjoying the work.
this is an exercise to feel your body and uh, to practice uh, self-defense as much as possible. Okay, and uh, try to like you're in a tight crowd and try to separate as much as possible. But in the meantime, deliver strikes and kicks and all the things that you've practiced uh, so far, uh, and defend yourself. So try to get out of that uh, crowd. Okay. Okay, come closer, guys. We will fight. <laughs> Fighting in the crowd is a Russian training tradition. One of the hardest scenarios is what we see here, each one fighting for himself. It really is a unique, incredible, and exciting experience of strikes, punches, and pushes coming from every direction. It forces you to look at your movements in a different way, quickly eliminates useless movements, and makes you realize the need to move constantly. It clears your mind and strengthens your spirit. Many participants ask to see some work using energy. And here is one such demonstration by Vladimir Vasilyev, Mikhail's student, colleague, and friend. The physical contact here is minimal, and work takes place at the psychological, mental, and psychic levels of the partner. The same key principles of the system are used by all the practitioners. Natural, free movements, smooth, solid, and continuous. But everyone adds his own interpretation, personality, and talent to the system. In this case, you see the power of light, effortless moves and the incredible diversity of work. <laughs> okay, so now let's kind of, I guess, the, the basic movement is like that. You push him a little bit, push him, resist, a little bit, resist, 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 but honestly resist, resist here, resist. And then you push. <laughs> because the, the density comes here, when you take away the density, resist again, and then push. Density. Хорошая идея, я скажу. 
<laughs> we are now in Germany. Mikhail was called here to teach a seminar for a German special operations unit. He then came to this Russian martial arts school in Augsburg, where he and Vladimir taught an intense two-day seminar for the civilians. You see a few moments from that seminar. Some of Mikhail's work with the German students was different but the people were just as amazed and excited. Upon Mikhail's request, we're inviting anyone who wishes to train with him to join us for our annual summer trip to Moscow. 